it's hard to say exactly how much more this is going to cost, but estimates have ranged anywhere from 30 to 50 to 60. Some people think even a dollar more per gallon for this fuel. The EPA, I think, is cute. They say it's only going to cost three cents per gallon, uh, but nobody agree. No one other than the EPA agrees with that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Power Gab, your go-to show for all things energy and environmental policy in the state of Colorado. I'm Jake Fogelman. My co-host, Amy Cook, is with me in studio today. And this week's episode, we want to talk a little bit about summer driving and some, uh, shall we say, additional expense that's going to be heading uh, Coloradans' way right as travel season is at, at its peak, Amy. Yeah, you know, um, I'm actually getting ready to drive to the beach. So um, this is... <laughs> going to particularly, or I guess hit me particularly hard, um, although it'll gas will be a little bit cheaper as I get into some other states. But I used to think that, um, you know, Memorial Day start the, I guess, the um, official kickoff of summer Memorial Day weekend, the dry, summer driving season. I just thought it was demand that drove up the price of gasoline. We all know that um, oil is a commodity, right. and 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 you know then we have limited refineries in the United States, um, and so I just thought it was a, a, a product of of supply and demand. And of course, always knew about California and their what I would call boutique fuels, they've had the, they, they, they've had to have, um, you know, different types of fuel for, for their smog and ozone issues. And then as we were preparing for this show, found out certainly a lot more goes into it than just, I mean, obviously it's supply and demand when you, when you need a specialty gasoline, which is, by the way, what's going to happen in Colorado, in case you all are wondering, um, April to June is sort of a transition to this, um, a, 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 a different, a differently refined product that we're going to have in our pumps, and it is more expensive. Um, and then June 1 is, is the date that EPA sets. We have, they have to sell a summer blend in Colorado from... June 1st to September 15th. And there are nine counties that are impacted by this because they're out of attainment, um, EPA attainment for ozone. And um, it is, uh, that standard has consistently gotten lower over time. And it is at a point where in Colorado, these nine counties are out of attainment. And if you're wondering what those counties are, I'll rattle them off and then Jake can tell you exactly the difference. I mean, part of what, why there's a summer and a winter blend, which are things we didn't know. But th so if you're in these counties, you are out of attainment with the EPA, I think it's 70, uh, parts per it's parts per billion. billion. Yeah, so so out of attainment, and it used to be higher than that. So um, they have lowered the standards over time. They've lowered that threshold. But Boulder, Denver, Arapahoe, Jefferson, Adams, Douglas, Broomfield, and Weld. And interestingly uh, enough, Weld County actually the entire county of Weld is considered out of attainment while only part of Larimer County is out of attainment. And there was a decision in the DC district court in, uh, I think it was um, April, 2020. So it was during COVID. So yeah, I, I get why nobody knows it, but uh, it was originally only gonna be part of Weld County. Now it's all of Weld County and apparently the ozone stops right at the, at the Weld County, Morgan County line. So. Um, if you're if you're in Morgan County, you're okay, but in Weld County, you are not. In, in, but there's there. This is a different type of gasoline that will now be uh, will only be available. I, I think probably most of Colorado will get more into that. But explain a little bit about what it is, the difference between the summer and the winter blends. Sure. Yeah. So uh, just a little backstory. In 2022, Colorado was officially declared in severe non-attainment by the EPA. And part of what that means is when you get a severe designation, the EPA says that starting in what they call the high ozone season, which is June 1st through September 15th, any place within the non-attainment district has to sell what's called reformulated gasoline. 
And for folks at home that are saying, what, what the heck is reformulated gasoline? Uh, apparently, it's, it's just spe specially blended to uh, reduce evaporation um, so that it doesn't kick as many what they call ozone precursors, stuff like NOx and SOx and those, those types of things that interact with the heat and create ozone. Um, so Amy kind of foreshadowed this a little bit. It's you know nine counties that are supposed to be the only ones that are subject to these requirements. But because of Colorado's unique fuel supply situation, I'm not so sure that the other counties are going to be so fortunate to miss out on this fuel, which by the way, um, it's hard to say exactly how much more this is going to cost, but estimates have ranged anywhere from 30 to 50 to 60. Some people think even a dollar more per gallon for this fuel. The EPA, I think, is cute. They say it's only going to cost three cents per gallon, uh, but nobody agree no one other than the EPA agrees with that. Uh, every other analysis I've seen suggests 30, 30 cents or higher. Um, and I think, yeah, you teased earlier, most of the state, I think, unfortunately, is going to be forced to pay that price. And, and, and the reason for that is that Suncor... Yep. Who, which is the only refinery we have in Colorado. Well, in the in the Mountain West, I well, no, it's it's Colorado, but they do. Um, I don't know if Utah has has refineries. I should have looked it up. Sorry, but um, they sell Suncor sells ninety five percent of the gasoline and the refined products that it sells stay in Colorado. So Suncor is going to actually be refining this this new reformulated fuel this boutique fuel and if they're selling it throughout colorado chances are you're going to see this reformulated fuel at least i would think probably at least along most of the of the front range yeah so if you're in el paso county you mentioned, we were talking before the show, I think you said Teller County. Teller County, Elbert. Yeah, Elbert. There, the other counties, I think you're you're probably going to see this high price, higher priced summer blend fuel in um, probably at your, at your gas station. I think that's right because you pointed out Suncor is the only refinery Colorado has. It currently supplies about 40% of the state's gasoline and we get some, you know, supplement from out of state refiners on trucks and pipelines and that sort of thing. Um, but they have already invested, I forget what the estimate was, but it was in the tens of millions of dollars to yeah. be able to tool up and be able to have the capacity to refine this fuel. And it would be hard for me to believe that after expending all that capital, they would just say, oh, it's just going to be for these nine counties and we'll keep our standard processes for the surrounding counties. Uh, I have a feeling that every, like you said, every metro area county is probably going to pay the same price. Well, and the other thing is if you've been, if you're a gas station along the front range, even if you're not in one of the counties that's out of attainment, but you have traditionally purchased your gasoline from Suncor, now you have to get it from somewhere else. Right. And so transportation costs are going to probably go up for you. Right, and this is one of the, the wrinkles that makes it so hard to put a cost estimate on what it's gonna be for Colorado drivers because Suncor is only supplying about 40% of this stuff. Out of state refiners that, you know, Colorado is the only state, or the, the Denver metro area rather, is the only region in the mountain, Rocky Mountain West that's subject to this fuel that's requirement. Right. So out of state refiners that are not subject to reformulated gasoline mandates are going to also have to retool to supplement Colorado's supply uh, which, I mean, it's a market opportunity for them, but you, you can expect that cost to get passed through, I think, to the pump. And I guess that's where the supply and demand comes in, too. Right. So, right. so as you're doing your summertime driving, right, you're, you're going to, the, the demand, the demand for this gasoline is going to be higher. Those of us in Colorado who are, who are going to be, I, I mean, I live in Weld County, I'm, I can't escape it. I may go over to the Morgan County line. That's right. <laughs> see, see if I can see if I can find it. If I can find some there, but um, or go up to to Wyoming. But the supply and demand is going to it, it's just going to drive up the price even more. Right. So uh, I, I have I have heard people say, yeah, you can't blame it for the the all of the summer spike, and it's probably absolutely true, but it's going to account for a significant chunk of that, that summertime spike I think in that's prices. Right. It, it really is a perfect storm because it's right when uh, summer travel obligations, or demand rather, is at its highest because people are going on road trips, right. they're going on vacation, uh, and you're having your only refiner have to retool and invest all this money, plus you're asking out-of-state refiners to invest all this money. I think that's just a recipe. That's why I think the, the three-cent estimate is, is laughable. I'm, I'm, 
I would wager to guess that it's going to be on the higher end of the estimates for costs for Coloradans. So there's actually kind of a backstory to this, and oh, yeah. I know you've covered this. Yep. Um, and and we should you should you should tell the story about about the the backstory on this um, sort of th this little cat and mouse game that Colorado's governor has played with the EPA. Yeah. So Colorado has sort of a difficult relationship with ozone. Uh, we just geographically, regionally, we've struggled with ozone for decades. Uh, we've made progress. I think we've actually halved our ozone contributions over the last couple of decades, but you pointed out early in the show that the EPA has just consistently ratcheted down what they consider the threshold. And something like 70% of ozone in Colorado comes from either background sources, uh, so naturally occurring, or it wafts in from out of state, so wildfires, out-of-state travel, shipping, a lot of it comes from Canada, Mexico, and it ends up right here in, in the Denver metro area, and we always get dinged for it. So in the past, because of these factors, uh, governors like Governor Hickenlooper, the previous governor, would send a waiver request to the EPA. So uh, at the end of his tenure, we were downgraded from moderate to serious, and he submitted a waiver and said, EPA, please work with us, give us some more time. You know, we're, have, we're reducing our ozone emissions, but you know, some of the stuff's beyond our control, so we would like some more time before you drop the regulatory hammer. Well, before the EPA responded, he obviously was termed out and Governor Polis took over. And the EPA in rulemaking was getting set to grant the waiver request when Governor Polis rode in on his white horse fresh off of his election <laughs> victory and said, actually, I would like to rescind this waiver request because, and I quote, you know, we must get a grip on our ozone pollution now. There's no time to wait. And you know, I look forward to taking the charge and, and leaving the charge and reducing our ozone contributions. Well, that's what he did. And fast forward four years later, and we're dinged again to severe. And it comes with this you know, massive uh, reformulated gasoline mandate. And at first, even he was said that that was great news. He verbatim said, this is good news. Reformulated gasoline is great. Uh, and if people are concerned about the higher expense, then they can just buy EVs because Colorado is doing all this work to make EVs accessible to the masses, or so he says. Um, and then I don't think that went over very well because out of nowhere over the last couple of years, he's suddenly become very stern with the EPA and has sent them angry letters requesting waivers and that reformulated gasoline is a terrible policy and these mandates shouldn't stand. Uh, and so now he gets to ride in on his white horse again on the other side and say, I'm going to put out the fire and get rid of this terrible RFG mandate. Um, you know, unfortunately for him, the EPA has basically told him to pound sand. Uh, there's nothing they can do at this point. It's, it's coming. And, you know, Suncor has already invested this money. It's not like they're going to go back on it. But like you said, this cat and mouse game, it's yeah. <laughs> just pure it, political waffling on the that's issue. It, 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 and it's politics with, with the price of gas. It absolutely and, is. And that's what's, that's what's infuriating about it. So those of us who have lived in Colorado, um, for, for many years, we, I've seen the brown cloud, I've seen the haze, yeah. I get it, I get it. And if somebody's, listen, we have to have a special blend and, and we just have to do it, okay. But the, the problem is the politics yeah. that gets, it really, it, it, it ends up, um, it, it gets, it gunks up the whole, the whole argument up. It just, it just, you know, you, you end up not trusting anybody on right. it. And there, there are a couple of things on this. So, so yeah, the governor came in. Oh, we're going to get our act together. We're going to we're, we're going to get a. I love how you say get a grip on our ozone. Um, well, it was never a problem before because EPA had waivers. They had emergency waivers in 2020 for COVID. Yep. They had an emergency waiver in 2021 because of the Colonial Pipeline hack. Yep. I was in North Carolina at the time, and 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 that was awful. I. Yeah, uh, seventy-five percent of North Carolina's um, gasoline came in came over the um, Colonial Pipeline, and you had gas stations. Two thirds of the states, actually, about seventy percent of the states' gas stations were dry for ten days, wow. two weeks. I mean, it was it was it was really hard. So there was there was um, an EPA waiver on that. Um, then in that was twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two, there was a waiver for the war in Ukraine. Right. So, so we're now for the first time ever having to, we're having to, to cope with this. We're having to get a grip, to use those, um, on the price of gasoline and what type of gasoline will be purchased or available in Colorado. But there, there are other things too. I mean, 
So, so, so we play politics when we want to. So right. they'll provide waivers when they want to. When they, oh, you, you know, COVID, I get it. Ukraine, they did it. They did it um, for the colonial pipeline. But there's now also there's a waiver that was just issued by the um, by the EPA at the end of April. To uh, normally they phase out E15, which is ethanol 15, for summer because it it contributes to smog, right. ozone. But guess what? There's a waiver for E15. So so they'll give waivers when they want. Right. And so they're uh, color me skeptical on um, any of this actually addressing the problem of ozone. If we really wanted to address the ozone or the smog issue, there are a couple of things we would do. One is improve the roads in Colorado because they're a train wreck, they're, hor they're a car wreck, they're horrible. They, they are atrocious and they don't move people. So you have cars sitting there and I get the left, you want people out of their cars, but they're not getting out of their cars. So you have to, I mean, move people. That's what you need to do. We need to move people on roadways that are safe. The other thing is state is terrible at wildfire mitigation. Yep. So start doing that. Um, th there are other things we could be doing that don't involve politics that would actually help this issue. Yeah, no, that is a great point. Just speaking of the E15 waiver, that I mean, it just goes to show politics is involved in all this stuff up and down the chain. It's not as straightforward as a regulatory decision based on the science and the Clean Air Act. And there's clearly politics at play in all this. And I think to your point, that's what leaves such a bad taste, I think, in everyone's mouth about this whole situation. Um, like you said, people, people like clean air. People have a vested interest in Colorado having clean air. But when they see that these decisions that are going to cost them money, that are going to hit them in their pocketbooks, uh, come down to, well, first, yeah, we're rescinding waivers that might have helped me. And now, actually, that was a mistake. And I'm going to fight really hard to get that waiver back. And, oh, it's not coming. Sorry, Coloradans. You're going to have to pay more for gasoline. Uh, yeah, I just don't think that sits well with the people of Colorado. No, it just, it, 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 it's, it smells. It yeah. just, it, it stinks. It, it is, it's politics. Uh, and and the other thing is, and I hear this all the time, um, especially um, we hear this about Weld County, and and well, this is this is going to help um, Coloradans be healthier. Okay, it, with things like asthma and every, except for Colorado is one of the healthiest states already. Right. I mean, I'm not I'm not um, dismissing asthma. I have, I had a, my, my young, my oldest had severe asthma. She eventually grew out of it, but, you know, carried around an inhaler, had it at school, everything. It was, it was a problem. But yeah, and I look around Weld County and, and the way they talk about things like oil and gas. Oh, the other one that, that causes ozone, ag. So, uh, right. but, but again, Morgan County, which is also ag, <laughs> where the ozone apparently stops. Anyway, um, but but the point be, we, we heard this all the time about oh, Weld County is unhealthy and everything, and, and I think I live up there. I, no, no, I, 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 Colorado as a whole is a is a healthy state, and we're fortunate for that. But it's because we appreciate and enjoy a healthy lifestyle. We love being outside. We love the out of doors. And, and I am all for eliminating the smog and the ozone, but the way, the way we are doing it, the way we're addressing it, and then the ways we aren't addressing it are particularly problematic. And it, um, it just doesn't, I don't have a whole lot of faith in how government is tackling the ozone issue. All they're doing is lowering the threshold and making it uh, while while people inside the state of Colorado, while our elected officials inside the state of Colorado are making it more expensive for Coloradans just for, for their, you know, their their um, cost of living. And then they're not doing the things that they should be doing to also mitigate it, which is to have uncongested roadways. Right fix the roads. I, I'd say what, you know, the, um, what we used to say around here, it, it, there was a popular saying, fix the bleep roads. <laughs> um, that was a whole campaign issue, but fix the roadways 
And then the other thing is get serious about wildfire mitigation. So that, um, I don't want to say those are my three takeaways, but uh, but because I because I actually do have three takeaways. Say, but before I kick that over to you for, for those takeaways, just I want to leave the listeners and the viewers with some numbers because to your point about how the state responds to this kind of stuff, they use it as a pretense to go after industries they already wanted to go after, oil and gas being the big one. Uh, and let me tell you why I, I think that that is more politics than actual you know helpful solution to this. Um, so oil and gas contributes about 8.6 parts per billion of the ozone precursors that, that are our problem. Uh, vehicles are around you know, six, seven. Uh, you have you know, industrial sources like power plants are about five points per billion. You know, lawn equipment, you know, the, the dreaded <laughs> leaf blowers that they hate so much is about two. Uh, and then there's like cleaning products and paint and that sort of thing is about one. Well, background in natural ozone, which includes wildfires, and it also includes out-of-state transportation, is 49 parts per billion. So every time that one of these downgrades happen, we go after the eight parts per billion uh, contributor uh, when there's this massive elephant in the room uh, that's contributing the lion's share of the ozone. And that's why, if, if I can leave the listeners with one thing, that's where the, the source of this frustration is, is we're going after, we're cracking down on very important industries that help you know, supply this very reformulated fuel that we're going to have to all use. Um, and we're not doing anything or, or simply maybe it's beyond our control to go after the real root cause of the problem. Um, but I just wanted to leave that with the listeners as we're coming up on time here. I'll kick it off to you to do the three takeaways. So to your point, gas is going to be expensive. Yeah. So number one, gas is going to be more expensive. And is it going to be as high as it was in 2022? Maybe not where it was knocking on the door of five dollars here in Colorado, but it's going to be expensive. It could, my guess is it shoots up over four. So gas is going to be expensive and um, it's going to hit the least among us. Right. So um, your cost of living is going to go up while, um, and, and chances are your wages won't keep pace with inflation. So gas is going to be expensive. And this gets to exactly what you hit on. If we're doing little to actually mitigate ozone, that's this is this is political. There are things we could do and we should be doing, but this reformulated gasoline will simply drive up the cost of gas, and it might have a little bit of of an impact. But we are not actually addressing things. Um, we're, we're not we're not tackling big issues that could actually help with mitigation in a much more robust way. So um, we're doing little to actually mitigate ozone. And then the other one is get a get a generator because um, for your EV because you're not going to have be able to plug it in because as they go after things like natural gas plants and stuff, <laughs> we aren't just going to have the power. So get a, get a generator or some kind of battery backup for your EV. Yep. Sage advice, as always, <laughs> Amy. Uh, but that does it for us and another episode of the Power Gab podcast. If you like what you see, uh, head on over to our YouTube channel, uh, IITV, and search the show. We have episodes every week you can find there. We're also available wherever you get podcasts and audio formats on Apple, Spotify, you name it. And feel free to share and like and subscribe and all sorts of fun things. Um, but until next time, we'll see you.